the longer you're away from the um, addictive and harmful substances, the less desirous you are of them. And, if, and better you are at retraining your taste and learning to love what you're doing now. Okay, that's my introduction. So let's get started with the lecture. My first slide here talks about the basic principle of the Nutritarian Diet. And I want you to memorize these five words. The five words um, reflect the most proven methodology to slow aging and extend human lifespan. And that is moderate caloric restriction in the context of micronutrient excellence. Those are the five words, moderate caloric restriction with micronutrient excellence. Because what we're looking for, sure we want a diet with a high nutritional bang per caloric buck, a high nutrient diet, but ultimately what we're striving for is high nutrient density in our body's tissues and cells. So it's, I'm representing this first principle with my health equation, H equals N over C, which means your healthy life expectancy and how healthy you are in your later years, not just living longer, but be su being super healthy in your later years, is proportional to the micronutrient per calorie ratio of your diet through life. And that means we're eating a diet with a high micronutrient per calorie, trying to eat foods that are rich in nutrients and avoiding foods, particularly processed foods and ultra processed foods that contain calories with no significant micronutrient load. And I use processed foods and sometimes white flour and sugar and honey as examples of high glycemic carbohydrates with no significant nutrient load. And that's so, but keep in mind that I'm saying that a product made from white flour like bread, pizza, Italian bread, croissants, bagels, cookies, cakes, waffles, you know, just cereals, these foods that are made from white flour are not really food because white flour converts itself into sugar to enter the bloodstream. And it enters the bloodstream the same as if you had a sugar cube or just ate sugar with a spoon right out of a sugar jar. There's no difference. Those things are not food because they don't supply the nutrients, the cofactors, the vitamins, the minerals, the phytochemicals, and the antioxidants. There's no supplying of the cofactors the body needs to metabolize sugar and to turn it into energy. So because it's efficiently converted into energy, it means it's utilizing and stripping the body of nutrient reserves and more easily stored as fat and then keeps you fatigued all the time because it's not efficiently converted into energy and desirous of more calories. So a food is something that contributes nourishment to the body. And these low nutrient foods are not foods. I call them the opposite of food or food spelled backwards is spelled doof, D-O-O-F. If you eat these things, which are like drugs and make and because and make a person become addicted to them and desirous of more highly concentrated calories, and you're a doof if you're going to eat those things at all because they're addicting. So this so this is the first principle of a vegetarian diet, and of course we're talking here about moderate caloric restriction to maintain a fever, a favorable body size and body fat percent. So we're adjusting what we're eating and we're adjusting how much we're eating. And I make the joke, I always say, you, um, half of what you eat, people live on half of what they eat and the other half meets the needs of their doctors. In other words, half of what you eat meets your needs and the other half meets the needs of your doctors. And even though that sign is kind of, it's like a joke and it sounds kind of silly. Yeah, half of what I eat I don't need makes me sick, but actually it's pretty accurate. Because most, because the average calorie consumption in America is like three thousand four hundred calories per person per capita calories, and and in healthy populations and healthy people only require between around fifteen hundred calories a day, or between really based on individual differences between twelve hundred and eighteen hundred, and most people are eating almost double the amount of calories they need. And I'm also saying here that this low nutrient intake, the lack of, and particularly the lack of green vegetables and mushrooms and onions and berries and seeds and all different types of colorful vegetables, whole grains. We're saying here that a huge variety of plant foods supply a full spectrum, a cornucopia of nutrients that human bodies can utilize. And that when you have a high nutrient concentration in your tissues, you desire less calories. And, and so the, the foods that are healthiest for us satiate us and remove our cravings to overeat. So as we, so diets of all description fail, meaning pe diets for weight loss fail, people can't lose weight because they're not focused on the quality of what they're eating sufficiently and adjusting, moderating 
the dietary quality to get enough nutrients in their tissues so they don't have an abnormal instinctual drive for calories. They haven't normalized their instinctual drive for calories. They discombobulated it because their diet is not nutritionally adequate. So let's review, of course, what I'm saying here that, let's see, how can I move this? Give me one second here. Sorry, Dr. Freeman, you're, you're trying to, to use your, uh, to cycle your, your slides forward? No, I was trying to move the bar across the top to the bottom because I can't read my slide with the oh. bar. I was just trying oh. to move the bar. Yeah, so what you can do is you, you, um, there's three dots on there. Oh, can you see three thing. dots? Yes, yes. You can I do hide, hide mini controls and that, that, should, that should allow you to, to hide the bar. Great, hide feet. Great. And then how do I get them back again if I want to back press, again? Press escape. Press escape and it comes back. Thank you for your help. I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> You learn something new every day, right? I had floating meeting controls. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Um, and of course, we're talking here about maintaining the neuroplasticity and fluidity of cellular membranes. We're going to talk about this in this presentation to give us that ability and enjoyment from learning new things and keeping ourselves open to be able to use logic and reasoning to change our thought process and change our belief systems. And that's part of the aging process, being excited and passionate about living and learning right to and enjoying our life, part of the enjoyment of life and not become rigid, fixated and, um, and egocentric. So we're talking about, so thanks for your help. Okay, so we're talking here about the recommended body weights for maximizing longevity. And that for males, the body fat is be recommended below 15%, which represents a BMI for based on individual differences between 19 and 23. And for a female to have a BMI below 25%. And what I'm saying is that as your body fat goes from 15% for a male to 18% to 20% to 25% to 30%, as it goes up, so does insulin resistance, which is accordingly goes up, which is a a factor for aging more quickly in a shorter lifespan. And when you're more, when the cells become more insulin resistant, the body has to produce more circulating insulin and, this, and having a higher levels of circulating insulin promotes angiogenesis. It's a primary fat storage hormone. And angiogenesis refers to the enabling fat cells to grow by producing more blood vessel growth to bring nutrients to the fat to allow it to grow. And this process where insulin promotes fat storage and angiogenesis allow tumor cells to grow and replicate. And therefore angiogenesis is a necessary ingredient in the witch's cauldron in cancer, if cancer production. So the, so the high insulin is a factor that promotes cancer on the body as well as aging the body quicker. And then you have higher rates of estrogen production. The aromatase production is exacerbated by fat cells. And as you get heavier, you become, the fat cell becomes more pro-inflammatory spewing out more reactive oxygen species, including cytokines and lipokines that suppress immune system, inhibit gene silencing, and, and, and also prevent the body to identify cells and have natural killer T cells, cause apoptosis of dying or dysfunctional cells or cells that could eventually go to cancer. I know I said that very rapidly. I'm going to slow that back a little bit and say that to give you the overall process here that um, that, for example, when a person gets exposed to COVID, their morbidity and mortality is enhanced when they're more overweight and sickly because their body is more pro-inflammatory and producing more cytokines and lipokines and other of these um, agents that come from the fat cells and are dumped into the circulation that make the body more inflammatory prone. And that inflammatory process also suppresses immune function. And I mentioned the term gene silencing because when you eat a diet with lots of healthy phytonutrients, you activate the portion of the cell that can silence abnormal genes that might lead to disease. So as we get acquired gene defects or inherited gene defects, like the BRCA1 gene that increases risk of breast and ovarian cancer, that gene becomes silenced with a high exposure to vegetables, especially green vegetables, especially green cruciferous vegetables, um, then scientists call genes this gene silencing because our diet affects who we are. Our genes aren't what we inherit. Our genes are what we eat and how we live. Much more important because the genes are either expressed or not expressed based on the nutritional content of our diet. So, of course, we're talking here that um, the 
healthiest lifespans for people living to be a centenarian with the most mental and physical faculties later in life in life are based on people who don't get too thin or too heavy, but strive for that muscular, lean, and strong body through most of their life and keeping body fat low. And as you probably heard, more body fat, which increases estrogen proportionally and also lowers testosterone. So it increases risk of prostate and breast cancer. And we want to lower estrogen and maintain testosterone production, which has an effect to lower prostate cancer and breast cancer. Mm -hmm.